Hello again, Blender heads. In this video, we're going to take my Gremlin sculpt from Blender, UV map him using a UDIM workflow, and import him into Substance Painter for texturing. To start off, although Blender does support UDIM workflow, it's certainly not optimized for one yet. Now, for those of you who don't know, UDIM stands for U-dimensional, with the U part referring to the number of UV tiles. In its most basic form, UDIMs are an automatic way of getting multiple texture maps onto a single model. This allows us to have one, two, five, ten, or a hundred texture maps and lets us add stacks of detail to our textures. In the case of the Gremlin here, I use seven UDIM tiles at a 4K resolution, giving me a total of 117,444,512 pixels. That's the equivalent of a 28K map. That's a lot of detail. So UDIMs are an awesome way for adding extra detail and Blender does allow us to use them, but it's currently a bit of a pain to bake them. Now, Blender can do some really good displacement maps. In fact, I have a tutorial here that will walk you through the process. But when you're working with UDIMs, we encounter some problems. When baking displacements, or any map for that matter, Blender currently doesn't read all the extra UV tiles. It can only see the first one. So you can bake your first tile without any problems, but by default, you can't bake any of the other tiles. So if you have 100 UV tiles, you're gonna have a bad time because we need to do some manual work here. In my case, I simply grab all of my UVs and I move them over by a value of negative one, which snaps them perfectly into place. I can then bake each UV tile individually, and when I've finished, move all of the UVs back into place. Now, like I said, if you have a hundred of these, this is going to be a pain. I know Dico has found another method for baking UDIMs, so you might also want to check out this video for an alternative workflow. With our UDIMs created and our displacement maps baked, this process becomes a lot smoother. I export two copies of my Gremlin model, one with the low poly version without the multi-res or any subdivision modifiers, and a high poly version with all the multi-res details. Just check apply modifiers in the export settings. I can now import the low poly version into Substance Painter and bake out my starting maps, using the high poly version to generate detailed maps like the normal maps. Now I've only used Substance on a handful of projects, so I am by no means an expert here. But what I love about Substance is just how quickly you can add paint to your model and get something that looks good. There's nothing about this Gremlin model that couldn't have been textured in Blender, but Substance makes the whole process much faster and easier. I start by adding this basic green creature skin smart material. This instantly generates an interesting skin material broken into multiple layers like the base green color, some darker blotchy areas, and some brighter speckled dots. What's awesome about UDIMs in Substance is you can use each tile for masking. So I have the mouth interior and the claws all on one tile, so I can remove them from the green skin material. I take the initial vibrant green and I make it a sickly black green shade to match the original design of Stripe from the movies. I then play with the other various layers to add some variety to the skin. So some large darker patches and some highlights to make the wrinkles and scale details pop. Once I'm satisfied with the overall random black and greens of the skin, I add a light brown color to add his belly and stripe details. I paint this on using a mask and a brush with a grungy alpha to add a good bit of randomness. I regularly go back to my references to make sure that I'm getting all of this roughly in the right places. I deviate a little from the concept art here and add some light brown to the fingers and toes. My thinking here is that the closer the bones get to the skin, the more it should impact the colour of the skin. So a lot of these colour changes are near joints or thin layers of skin. Even though we're extremely close up to the fingers here, you can still see all the individual brush strokes. They're not blurry or grainy or anything. This is the power of the UDIM workflow. Even though Substance Painter occasionally struggles with all of this texture resolution, it's worth it for this kind of amazing detail.
I'm fairly happy with the body paint now, so I move on to texturing the mouth, teeth, and claws. It's pretty rare we'll see the inside of his mouth, but I still want to add a little bit of random colour and bump variation with some grunge materials. So far I've been able to use the UDM tiles to separate the different materials, but the gums and teeth are on the same tile. So here I use Substance's Object Selection tool to mask out the teeth and work exclusively on the mouth. I'm still familiarizing myself with the Substance workflow, so in the future I'll either set up my UDMs a little bit better, or look into using ID masks, which allow you to group objects based on color. I spent quite a bit of time hand painting the teeth, only to realize later on that there is a creature teeth material that actually gave me better results. Again, I'm still learning my way around substance. I'm sure with time I'm going to have a better idea of what materials come pre-packaged to save me time. It's around here I realized that I want the brown of the belly to be a lot more prominent than the stripes and bony parts. So I duplicate the layer and mask out the parts I don't want. Then I can blur the stripes a little bit more to blend them in with the darker green skin better. I start playing around with adding a custom scratch material to roughen up the edges of his armour plates. Thankfully, I thought to see if there were any other automatic smart materials that could do a lot of this heavy lifting for me, and I ended up using a worn leather material as a base, and then started tweaking that to my liking. I paint out areas like the skin wrinkles and the veins so that these scratches only end up on the armour parts of his body. I'm getting pretty close to finished here, but I'm noticing there's parts of the skin that still seem to lack a little bit of detail. Although the sculpting I did in Blender has produced a really nice displacement and an initial normal map, I'm still missing those really fine details like cracks in the skin and pores on the face. I spend a bit of time just adding little bits of grunge, breaking up the leathery texture on top of my normal map. You won't necessarily see these individual details unless you get really, really close, but you'll be able to feel it in the way that it breaks up the light as it hits the skin. With these micro details added, I export my maps and jump into Blender. Back in Blender, I attach these texture maps to a principled shader. Now, just a heads up, the Node Wrangler add-on doesn't seem to recognize UDMs yet, so I had to manually set the image texture to UDM and refresh each texture before Blender was able to pick up each of these UDM tiles. Up until now, I've ignored the eyes, as I've always known that I wanted them to have their own separate texture. I jump into Photoshop and I do a bit of texture bashing with some free iris textures I was able to find online, and then add some random red and yellow monster colours. 
This design is partly based on the original stripe from the movie, however you can tell in the close-up shots that his eyes were just coloured marbles, they didn't look that great, and I wanted them to be a bit more organic. So I ended up using this amazing cat eye image I found as reference. Seriously, this thing is stunning, and I was really happy to base my gremlin's eyes on this. With these massive UDM textures, it does take cycles a while to get into the viewport rendering mode. But what's amazing is that once it's loaded everything, the viewport is just as fast as any other character I've made. Hats off to the Blender Foundation, this is really impressive. One final thing I had to do to match the original movie was give Stripe his iconic white mohawk. I created a simple plane to add the hair to. Now you can just add this hair to the gremlin mesh itself, but this mesh is already quite dense both with polygons and textures, and I wanted a very simple mesh to work with while creating the hair. As an added bonus, I've recently had a friend lend me his Rococo motion capture suit to test out. I'm seriously considering buying one of my own. So here's a quick demonstration of me pretending to be a gremlin. I'm planning to do a short animation with this gremlin using the motion capture suit, so if you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video.